Hello and welcome to the second tutorial in Pygame. So what we'll do in today's tutorial is set up the game loop and set up the screen for frames per second. So the first thing we're going to do is set up a variable to hold a boolean value to break out of um, the game loop which we'll use a little bit later on in this tutorial. So all we do is create a variable. I've called it running because, you know, whilst it's true, the game, the game will be running. So it made sense in my head. But obviously you can name this whatever you want. It could be um, game running, um, game, you know, game going, whatever you want, as long as it's all one word. And we're setting it to true. And note that it's a capital T for true. So that's storing the Boolean value of true in the variable I've named running. The next thing we're going to do is set up a clock because we'll want to set the frames per second for our game. So we do that by just doing this. We make a variable called clock because it makes sense. And we're setting it equal to pygame.time. And notice clock here has got a capital C. That's easy to miss. And don't forget you need the open and close brackets after it as well. So now we've got the beginning of our loop and what well, the the value we're going to use in our loop and we've got the clock we can set about making our loop so first thing we're going to do is start off the while loop so as always with a while loop we simply put in um, the keyword while and then we will use the variable we created earlier so whilst running that's the one here so this is automatically true so the while loop will be entered into just make sure that's on the far left of the screen with no space so this is going to be our main game loop and in here we're going to put most of the code that we're going to be using in our game to do things like detect key presses detect events and things like that so that's what we'll do next we're going to set up a for loop within the while loop. So this is a loop within a loop. So the first thing we're going to do is use a event.get and this basically will get any action that the user um, takes within the game. So let's put that in. So this looks a bit complicated but let's just break it down for you. So we're going to say for event in pygame.event.get. So this will get any action taken within the game window. If somebody clicks on something, um, presses a key, this will pick it all up. And the first thing we're going to program is if the person has clicked the X button in the top right hand corner of the window. Now you might have noticed before that if you clicked on the X it didn't do anything. Um, now it will. So we're basically saying if the type of event is equal to pygame.quit, so they've clicked on the X at the top right of the window, um, set the Boolean variable to false. Now what will basically happen is, once you've got this code in, if they click the window, um, click the X at the top right of the window, the game will end. Okay, But it will only end once we've done one more thing. We need pygame.quit right at the bottom of our code because this will be what gets hit once um, the game you know, ends. So we will need that. The next thing we need to do is make sure all of this now is inside our main loop. So an easy way of doing this is to highlight it all and go up to Format and Indent Region. So just in one click, it's now all within the while loop. If you put your cursor here, click on the arrow keys, you can see it's indented exactly correctly. So let's just bring this lot up a little bit. There we go. So just close up some of the space. And let's just give a bit of space there, just for formatting reasons. So now we've got our event loop. We can check if somebody quits. If somebody quits, this loop will end and it will hit pygame.quit, which is exactly what we wanted. Now, one other thing we haven't got yet, which is we need to set the clock to however many frames per second that we want. And this, again, will come in here inside of the while loop, not inside of the event loop, but inside of the while loop. So clock dot tick 60 will set us to 50 fra 60 frames per second. Um, you can obviously set that to 30 frames per second, but you know, we've chosen 60. So a couple of things to check. Make sure all of this code here 
is only indented once because you want it inside of the while loop but not inside of the event loop. This event loop is what we're going to use in the next tutorial to get people's um, keyboard movements, things like that. So this we need, but you do not want this code inside of the for loop, but it does need to be inside the while loop. And the way you can check is using the cursor like I just showed you to make sure it's perfectly in line. The beginning of every line is perfectly in line with this F here. Now, if you've done that, it should all work nicely. So finally, let's just run it and check we've got the code in. And if I bring over the output, this is what we ended up with last lesson. You might not see anything particularly changed because it's the only thing that's changed is now, if we click on this X, the game closes. However, now we've got this set up, in the next tutorial, I can now show you how to use keyboard controls to make things move across the screen. Thank you for listening, and I'll catch up with you next time.